welcome to today's deep dive with Siemens Healthineers and their award-winning project, Pediatric Radiology Experience. Um, so a few words beforehand, if you joined us on Zoom, uh, of course, please mute your mics, turn on your cameras um, and join the Q&A after the presentation. And if you join us on LinkedIn Live, then just please post your questions in the chat and we will bring them into the session. My name is Akko Rudolf. I'm the director of the UX Design Awards and head of strategy at International Design Center Berlin, in short, IDZ. We are the awards organizer. A few words about us. We are a leading independent design institution with more than 50 years of expertise. And um, our mission is actually to promote design as a driver of innovation, both in business and society and worldwide. And that's also why we founded the UX Design Awards in 2015, uh, with the aim to promote the positive impact of people-centered design on our lives and to recognize the people and talent working on this field. Um, so actually uh, the call for entries for the next awards in spring 2023 is open right now and will be until the end of November. So if you're working on great experience projects, then just make it count and take part and uh, have a look at the website for more. But now, uh, welcome to our virtual event series. Um, they feature designers and teams that are distinguished in the awards. We invite them to present and share knowledge with our professional community. You can join us twice a month, actually, for deep dives with professionals and companies and for talent tracks with up and coming UX designers. So stay tuned, uh, follow us on LinkedIn, social media, or just subscribe to our newsletter for more. It's now my pleasure to introduce today's product award winners 2022, the Project Pediatric Radiology Experience. It's a holistic approach to prepare children for radiology, which is MRI scans, uh, quite a um, intense procedure. It's a product for the entire patient journey that enables kids and parents to actually actively participate in the preparation for the scan. And the goals among the most important ones were to reduce the anxiety and stress of children, parents, and also clinical staff. And with this to, of course, help children, you know, go through a, a positive uh, medical experience, but also to decrease the number of repeat exams or even sedations of children so they lay still while they are being scanned. And the award jury in their statement for the award um, said that the product helps kids to become knowledgeable actually, and it shifts their status from an affected child, an affected patient to an engaged uh, kid. And it turns fear and powerlessness to curiosity and experience and it helps to gain trust and patient, uh, patience uh, in the medical procedure. So the product was developed by a team that is today represented by Alexandra Zahn. Uh, she is director of humanizing healthcare design at Siemens Healthineers in Germany. And actually Alexandra uh, did a BA in health sciences, uh, sciences. So she was a radiologist technician and a therapist. Um, so she brought this medical knowledge to Siemens Healthineers where she's been working for more than 16 years as a product manager, as a key expert on patient experience. She headed the interaction design department and is now working on a director level. And today with her is Anna Weidner, user experience designer. She holds a master of science actually in human computer interaction. She joined Siemens Healthineers about three years ago after several positions in design and art direction in different companies and fields. So Alexandra and Anna, it's wonderful to have you here. Welcome to today's deep dive. And with this, I would love to give the screen to you. Please take it away from here. Thanks, Aka. Thanks for the nice introduction. I'm going to share the presentation and make it bigger for all of you. Okay, Fabian, everything works? Wonderful. 
Okay, great. Um, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome the UX community for the ones that are dialed in today uh, to our deep dive from the UX Design Awards. We would like to present uh, the Pediatric Patient Experience Project uh, to you and uh, answer your questions. So let's have a look. Um, what's on the menu today for you? Um, we have a small project brief again. It's just that we are all on the same page. Uh, then we take you on a fairy tale, once upon a time. Uh, we will look through the user-centered design process, which will be the biggest part of today's presentation. And um, we also prepared some takeaways, especially for you, um, which are a little bit um, overlooking the plate, not only um, project or content-wise. So you have to stay until the end to get uh, to get this uh, takeaways with you. Aki, you, you, you said already who we are, uh, but uh, yeah, nevertheless, hi everybody. I'm Alex and uh, I'm with Siemens for a long time and I have uh, the honor to drive the uh, patient experience topic and the humanizing healthcare design topic within our global UX organization within, within Siemens Healthineers. And we, in regards of the pediatric project, I was uh, driving it from the strategy perspective. And also, hi from me, I'm Anna, and I joined Siemens um, three years ago, and I'm user experience designer there, and yeah, I'm responsible for the UX topics in that project. So let's start again, um, the pain, why pediatric matters and uh, why we looked uh, into this rather small field, uh, rather small healthcare field, so to say. If we look at the uh, imaging examinations today, um, we can imagine every tense examination, not only children's hospitals, really every tense examination in normal hospitals is performed on children. And uh, children are not small adults. That's why there is a high, really high failure rates in the examinations, uh, which ends up in sedations. Sedations have also risks for the, for the child. So we see a lot of parents that uh, do not want to sedate their child. And also for the clinical staff, um, these are much longer procedure times. Sometimes they take one, one and a half hour longer because for a sedation, you can imagine you need also uh, anesthetists and extra personal for it. So um, and there is a raising number or increasing number of uh, imaging examinations due to the increasing number of diseases. And we know from studies um, that an adequate child preparation is key. So if we take the time to prepare the child or the families in the right way, um, we could really do something and standardize it and change it and not starting uh, once the family enters the hospital. And so that was basically our, our, our passion and our, how might we, our challenge, how might we establish, establish a holistic approach to pediatric radiology preparation to minimize fears and anxiety of the children, but also very important, and their parents before an imaging examination to reduce stress during the entire clinical workflow. And that um, has an effect, of course, in lowering the costs and risks for the children, um, increased satisfaction of our stakeholders, of the clinical personnel due to reduced examination times and, uh, and due to the reduced stress level, you can imagine that the flow, that the workflow is much smoother um, if you have uh, lower stress here. And of course, in the end, we have uh, better outcomes and also the willingness to undergo therapy because we do have a lot of imaging examinations. And in the end, unfortunately, there is very often a diagnose where a therapy follows. And if the first touch points of the imaging examinations were shaped positive or at least not negative, then the willingness to undergo therapy is also higher. 
So what do we have? What kind of material do we have? As Aka said very nicely, um, we do have, uh, we, we play the entire patient journey from the beginning, from the incident, from the pain, from the referring MD until the end, until post-examination. Um, uh, I also, I like to call it multidimensional. So we play across the patient journey, but we also play, and this is sometimes still misleading as I, as I hear, we also play that uh, throughout different examination. It's not only the MRI, it's also the computer tomography and also the, uh, uh, the, uh, the fluoro examinations that we, uh, that we have a look into. That's why multidimensional. So it's across our business lines as well. Um, so we start in the beginning, the preparation at home, the family, they can read. We have three different books for the three different examination types. They can read through the book um, and uh, they can start with the QR code. They can start a, uh, an audio play to listen to. There's also a magic song, uh, which gives bravery where the children can listen to. Um, and they can they can iteratively look at the book and uh, and watch the book and learn more and more. Once they enter the hospital, uh, they see the theme world of the giraffe and 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 of the savanna again. Uh, so there is kind of recognition there. They can continue listen to the audio play or listen to it again uh, during the examination. And in the end, they receive a reward medal from the uh, technologists. So join us on this uh, travel, <laughs> the story of Gerda, or Once Upon a Time. Um, it is really on my heart to say, um, if you, we are not in the solution space, we are not starting in a solution space, even so we as humans tend to have ideas. I have an idea to solve this problem. Um, what, what we did was really looking left and right what do we have within the company? Is there anything which is proven already? For example, we had a project, it was called the Holistic In-Room Experience, where we developed different kinds of theme worlds. And we also had some clinical partners that worked together with us to, uh, to really study if these theme worlds work. And they do work on children. Uh, we, have, uh, we have the proof that they lower the so-called trade trait anxiety. So why starting from scratch something new to reach towards the, the, the patient uh, from the beginning? That's why we, um, we use the theme world so-called as a, as a basis for this project. And uh, Anna will talk us through the uh, entire user-centered design process. Yeah, so thank you, Alex. So I will um, talk a little bit more about the user-centered design process and um, how we started and continued. And we at Siemens Health and yes, we follow the user-centered design process, um, as you see here as the UCD loop. So we always try to constantly iterate and put our target user in the yeah, middle of the process and in the iterations and always try to involve them in our activities. And what you here see is, um, yeah, a kind of um, combination um, or overview of our research activities. So we did not only just feedback sessions, interviews and questionnaires, we also um, involved um, our target users. So the children in the co-creation workshop and um, we also did context analysis. And um, we quickly learned that we not only have the children at our um, target group, we also have the parents and the clinical staff. And, um, we also have the play therapist and the psychologist, and that was very important to um, yeah, really draw all them into our feedback sessions and research activities to get um, all the yeah, really valuable knowledge from all the different perspectives here. And um, what I want to um, yeah, talk a little bit more into detail is um, the co-creation workshop, because I think this gives us a really good and deeper understanding um, how the children think and how they um, really perceive the situation of the examination. 
and it offered us the, the really significant insights um, and were also the foundation of the audio play that we created then. And then we actually had really to prepare differently for that workshop and how to really um, interact with children because they, as Alex already said, are not just small adults. Um, they think different, they um, describe different, and sometimes they need more attention. And um, we run that sessions with um, children um, in the age between four and 10, um, and to really learn more about their fears and the feelings when they undergo the examination. So they um, yeah, played with that mock-up scanner and we um, used the method of role-playing here. So they had um, little hand puppets that, uh, that Alex actually shows in the camera now. And they, um, yeah, could um, actively play um, doctor and scan the puppets and um, over this third party description, how they told us how the animal might feel and um, what it might think or is afraid of, that gave us really um, insight and also good um, ideas um, for interventions. And as I already said, um, we built that pocket scanner they could interact with. And also here, um, you see a little process um, how we built that. And um, we also actually iterate that. Um, so we learned that we need to add some um, more interactive features. So we added a button and a little mobile phone. So this is very simple, but it really gave um, the effect that the, the um, children could really interact with. It was the, the basic features that really um, had an impact here. And um, all these insights and ideas that the um, children told us, we mapped to our patient journey. So pre, during, and post-examination and clustered them. And um, it was also the basis for kind of list of key insights we made. So we have a, have a list of 16 insights that really helped us um, during and along the whole design process. And for example, here you see number five, that children take an active role. Um, we already heard that. So we wanted um, to empower them and really involve them into the workflow to give them the feeling they have things under control and can, can handle the things by themselves. And yeah, together with um, the, the insights from the co-creation workshop and the other research activities and, and interviews, we um, came up with a, a lot of personas and we really tried to um, yeah, cover all the personalities that the different children have. So some of them are more louder, more brave, some of them are shy. And that was really important to build all the different um, patient personas here. And um, what we then did is that um, we turned them actually in the characters of the audio play. So Nor actually turned into Leo the lion and um, Leo is, yeah, he is the son of the king of the jungle and is always expected to be really brave um, because of his, his father was, but actually inside he is really insecure and afraid. And so we, um, yeah, came up with a lot of um, different characters in the, uh, in the audio play. And we give actually every, every different child and, and personality, we gave them the chance to um, identify at least with one character of the, of the audio play. And um, on the next slide, yeah, you see um, all the different characters here and you can um, scan um, the audiobook out um, of our interactive book. And all the animals give you actually already interventions and possible ideas how to handle their um, examination and how to handle your anxieties and fears. So that actually helps the children when they hear the audio um, play already to prepare. So um, they actually could prepare themselves and help themselves. And that was actually our goal to really empower them to do that. And yeah, on the next uh, slide, you see, uh, yeah, our stress triangle, um, because we find out that there is um, a lot of correlation between the different um, user groups. And um, when you see here, like when the parents are stressed, um, it always, yeah, travels fast to the child. So it really transfers to the different um, user groups. And um, there are, yeah, a lot of dependencies, but um, we try to really um, turn the dependencies in a positive way. So when we um, do the pediatric um, radiology preparation, also include the parents or the techs, um, you see that it also transfers in a kind of positive way and is in the workflow. And that leads us to the, to the fact that we um, also included um, 
at the end of the book, um, a little chapter for parent information. So, so it's yeah, easy explained with illustrations that they also yeah, have the feeling they, they understand what's going on with their child. And on the next slide, um, yeah, I will talk a little bit about the user testing and the customer feedback that we had. And yeah, we tested with um, a lot of stakeholders at the beginning. We started um, with a kind of parent study. So that was actually really at the beginning when we had the first prototype of the book to really test um, the story of the book, if the, if the um, children can understand it. So we handed out books and medals and the parents um, were expected to read it out um, to their children and um, send us back a questionnaire um, with all the things that um, you might need to um, change in the story or explain a little bit more, more deeper for the kids. And here you see uh, our first welcome boxes that we brought to our cooperation partners in the clinics um, where we actually yeah, tested, um, tested it in the, in, the, in the whole workflow. So we sent it out and at the back there were um, little QR codes and the text and the parents could scan it and give us feedback. On, on the products. And yeah, we also um, did an evaluation of the audit play in the kindergarten, which you see here. And what I think was really great to see here is that, um, yeah, Gerda already had an impact of them. So afterwards, as you can see, they paint these like, pictures with the giraffe and the machines. And we also played the magic song here and they were dancing afterwards to it. So actually Gerda was um, <laughs> in their lives the whole day at that um, evaluation. And yeah, after we, we incorporated all the feedback um, that we got um, in, the, in the activities, we came up with our final preparation box. As you can see here, we have the books in there, the um, break medals, and um, a stick with the audio play. And that actually we presented in July um, on the European um, Congress of Radiology in Vienna where we um, had a whole um, patient experience corner. And it was really great to see that um, internally and externally, so many people were interested in it and give us so great feedback about it. And yeah, afterwards, we <laughs> were really glad to see um, or to receive um, the UX award. And um, I think Alex will now continue to uh, talk a, a little bit more about the, the learning and the takeaways that we got from our project here. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Um, so what, what kind of learnings do we have or where do we think uh, you, have, you have the most learnings from? <laughs> this is how we prepared the next slide. And uh, we called it again, this creative mindset or agile mindset, design thinking mindset, uh, learn fast, fail fast, fix fast. And uh, I would like to mention that also if you have an idea or a project, and uh, of course be immune and immunized with, with, with that idea and with that project, um, dare, to, dare to fail, fix it and adjust it, make it round um, in a way that it really fits to, uh, to the customers and to the user, to the user needs basically. And uh, do not hold on things uh, that may not may not work that that well. This is basically what uh, what this slide uh, should should tell you. And always stand up again. Yeah. And uh, this is one example where we were thinking our idea of a breathing app to teach the, 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 the children uh, how to breathe during the examination must be great. And then we found out um, very quickly, thanks God, we did not invent it too much time up front. We, this project is really a nice showcase that we went out uh, and talked to our target uh, groups uh, or also the, 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 the clinicians within the hospital from the beginning and they told us ah, no actually this breathing is not the most important one uh, better teach children in terms of fear and lying still and uh, being alone without their parents being in a new unknown environment and uh, so we, we were really throwing that idea away and uh, did something new and came up with new ideas. So it was um, a continuously iterative process of uh, getting, getting feedback on the materials that we are developing 
And uh, another example was that, um, of course, it was very clear we said Gerda is somehow stumbling. She's playing in the jungle with her with her friends and then she's uh, stumbling over her long legs and she has a broken leg or broken bone and this is why she needs to undergo uh, the imaging examination and um, that was also something where we got pretty fast then the feedback no this might be not the right thing because some people or some children um, that may have um, that may have a, a, a more serious disease, they will not be able to identify with, uh, with Gerda if she only has this broken leg. So we adapted our storyline in a way that um, <clears throat> the mother of Gerda is cooking some, some jello um, for, for Gerda. Gerda is running around in the kitchen and the necklace of the mother uh, breaks and the pearls from the necklace are falling into the pot of the jello. And then Gerda is, uh, loves jello. She's eating the jello and uh, then she has basically the pearls in her stomach and she uh, she starts getting a, a, a really severe belly pain and uh, nothing really helps. So then she needs to undergo the imaging examination. So we adapted the, the story that it fits to more a broader, broader audience and that the children can identify. Um, another another feedback or insight that we got um, was um, um, probably a lot of you know these activity books where some interaction needs to be done. And uh, in the beginning, we thought, hmm, does this really have this effect? Because we think we sometimes tend to think uh, from an adult or parent perspective. And, uh, and we learned within this project um, really to, to, to step into the shoes, um, uh, into the shoes of the children. Um, and, and, and they taught us a lot. So we learned a lot and it does not need to be an app or an electronic device from the beginning. It really worked with the books. Um, as you can see down here in the pictures, um, uh, it says in this interaction, join in, rub Gerda's tummy and blow the pain away. Maybe then she feels better. And this is really something the children are doing. They are, they are rubbing the belly and put their hands on, on the paper. And uh, the same with the, with the page, um, with the metal objects. Um, they love it. They are like really making a challenge out of it. Um, they say, oh, this is not allowed. This is not allowed. This is not allowed. And, and it, it really works. And what it basically does is uh, this hand brain um, um, combination gives them a recognition also to remember uh, uh, on what, what helps or what, uh, what do I have learned um, when I when I then enter the uh, the real procedure within the within the hospital. So, what's next? Um, what is the outlook um, with the with having this great U UX design award? And uh, maybe we can talk about that also after the presentation a little bit uh, later. Uh, that really shows again from external experts uh, that they see the holistic experience and, uh, and, and the change, what we do here. And that also helps us internally um, to build up on this, uh, on this, solid solid base uh, that that we are having um, but um, as you can see here there's uh, there's a lot of uh, still open and wide spots in our patient journey that we are that we are having and we would like to elaborate a little bit more towards this direction um, um, towards the direction of shaping a positive experience and then what because after the examination, maybe before the examination. So we are looking a little bit into this, into this direction. And the design award, of course, helps us here uh, very much uh, UX internally, but uh, even more um, externally within the company towards uh, the product management and the business lines. And uh, what did we learn? the challenges and the takeaways um, that we are having here. 
These are, by the way, these are the little pearls that you can see that Gerda swallowed here, the pearls from the necklace. Um, so <laughs> the children's really use, uh, use, this, uh, use that metaphor to draw on that. Um, so one takeaway was really within this project, um, we had so many work streams, so many materials that we provided. And of course, we iteratively got feedback, but we had not just one book and uh, one parent information. It was basically three books and three parent information. And we had the audio play, which also needed to fit all three examination types. Um, so there was quite, a, a, that was quite some challenge um, that we needed to really sync and align the feedback that we got that in the end, we still have this experience so that still everything fits together. And this is why our learning was, uh, you need to have one hub or one person that, that really has the overview and that looks into it and uh, that has all the materials on the plate and, uh, and, and tracks the changes uh, somehow. And also may, I'm, I'm, I want, would like to add that to the changes that not every change needs to be incorporated right away, especially in this project. Sometimes we really had to check when the feedback came from adults, from us adults to check with the children, does this really bothers the children or is it just our thought as an adult uh, that we need to change that? Um, then this was really before the co-creation we said yes we would like to co-create with children and uh, we got this puzzled face of you would like to co-create with what with children um so our our message to you would be um insist on user research it is so important um but at the same time we know that this is mainly less budget, less time for it. And, uh, and I think, um, yeah, we also need to be patient with our perfectionists and ourselves and um, mm, do the user research, even if it's sometimes not 100% the way uh, we were planning it in our project plans. Team health. Um, we really had this great multidisciplinary team exchange, not only from, from the UX uh, uh, people, we had research from UX, we had interaction design, uh, industrial design, um, but we also had uh, um, team colleagues from marketing, from communications, from the business lines that gave us uh, feedback. And uh, that was a great experience for us as well. And therefore we had a lot of multi-cognitivity, I'm not sure if this word exists, <laughs> but I put it down here in the project. And there, we need to respect it because there are so many different views on, on the thing. So um, listen and, uh, and, and respect the others. Um, yeah, we, we also learned that this that the project uh, where the team members see the value in the end of what we are doing or the goal or the value or the humanity uh, that really boosts the intrinsic uh, motivation and that does a lot within, within, within a team. Um, yeah, do not forget about your team health uh, uh, in terms of uh, celebrating the little approaches, get together if possible and uh, have fun together. And uh, this is, I think, our last, our last slide. Um, uh, Anna and myself, we like this picture a, a lot because it says so much. It says, and we, we put like, be always aware of the impact of your design. So mm, it's maybe not only you design an interaction that somebody uses, it maybe sticks in, in, in somebody's head or uh, it comes back again. Like we see here, Leo was drawing this uh, Siemens healthy nears um, oh, for the, well, it's, yeah, it's like, um, uh, now how, how can we translate it into English? It's like healthy nears, <laughs> Siemens healthy nears. 
uh, and is associating uh, uh, this brand basically with with Gerda, with uh, with the giraffe, and uh, we think this is a really nice metaphor, and uh, also brings some passion in the things uh, that that we do because it it lasts for longer. Yeah. Having said that, um, we thank you. Life. This is the magic song that makes you big and strong. This is the magic song. Looking Come forward. on. This is your questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex and Anna. Um, maybe you can turn off your presentation so uh, we can see you. And to all of you out there, please uh, post questions in the chat or just when you're on Zoom, uh, jump into um, the Q&A. But well, thanks a lot for, for this great presentation. I think it opened so many questions. Uh, um, I have a full list, uh, but I'll take some from the public as well, from our audience, because there's some interesting questions there. And uh, I, I, I first thought, well, it's, it's, it's such a simple project. It's about children, you know, and then a playbook. <clears throat> but when you started talking, I think the penny dropped when you talked about exploration, understanding who your users are and their situation. And I thought, how difficult must it be for adults and specialists, especially, to become non-specialists and children? This must be extremely difficult. So I wonder, how did you, how did you actually fill the shoes of children? So, how did you succeed in, in throwing away your specialization and your 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 you know um, professionalism? Uh, because at some point you also said you needed to to uh, uh, ask yourselves whether doing some changes uh, was necessary and was it necessary from a point of view of children? So how, how did you change this perspective? Yeah. Sh should I answer, Anna? Or should I start answering, Anna? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's, a, it's a really good question. And I think it's so important not to spoil the experience. That's why it was on our heart to, 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 to mention that here. Um, I, I think, first of all, it's really important to get the feedback from the experts, from the clinicians, from the child life specialists, from the psychologists. And uh, what helped us a lot was uh, that um, that we, we had some time together where we somehow resetted ourselves and always were asking us this question. If, if the question is in the room always, that you say, OK, it's, it's our mindset. Uh, not to take everything for granted, it's maybe not the right word, but I hope you get the point um, and and rephrase and ask yourself, is, uh, is, is, is that important for the children or not? Um, then this helps, but sometimes it does not, it does not work for us either, but it helped, I think, this co-creation workshops and the playing together with children um, that really makes that really makes the difference and also not only talking to clinical specialists um, also talking to um, how do you say that to ki kinder kindergarten um, erzieherin <laughs> yeah uh, because there you are you have more this educational part um, uh, so more really looking at the broader education part and not only the healthcare topics What do you think, Anna? How, how did you become a child in this <laughs> um, I would say it also became a little bit more more natural along the whole process. And what I what I really um, yeah, what was really good that we started to include the children that early. Um, as soon as we had um, the the first story ready, we already give it out um, to the parents and and to the children. And um, that actually really shifted, shifted my mind because um, we thought, okay, this story is good. We explained all very well, but actually sometimes children, they focus on so different details <laughs> that we couldn't even think of. I, I can remember one child. Um, so at the beginning we had a little rhyme um, in the, in the book where um, Gerda, she ate pudding and that fell on her pants or on, on her trousers. And then, but she never wear actually trousers in the in the illustrations. <laughs> and then I know one side that was then she really just focused on that little detail. She was constantly talking, okay, where are the pants? But she doesn't wear trousers. She doesn't wear trousers. <laughs> and 
that he's like, yeah, to the whole whole reading um, from from her mom. So um, you really need to think um, in that kind of mental model of children if this is logically and even if it's so simple. So yeah, I think that yeah, it comes really along the the whole process, and you constantly need to involve the children to learn this. I would say. And maybe let the children talk. I think mm -hmm. we as adults, we tend to be like, yeah, we know everything and shush, shut up now. And it's, yeah, we, we know what to do, um, uh, but let them talk and then they will take your hand and and and, and show you the, the path somehow. For the ones that have children, they may they may know that if they have, if they take the time that this, this magic uh, somehow can happen. Yes, I think time is 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 of essence. That's basically the the key point that you said uh, that you noticed. There is there is a question from Svetlana uh, Svetlana Penova uh, in the audience that actually I think fits very well in here. She's a lead service and product designer at Zero Three Sixty, and uh, she asked which assumptions did you have at the beginning about the problem space uh, that had not been confirmed mm -hmm. through the user research for children. many too many to to say no maybe i was i was um pausing a little bit because i was uh, hearing the the service design uh, <laughs> approach but um mm, I think the mindset was really to to fill this this problem space, and we did not have many preconceived solutions in our in our head already, and uh, so there were not that many. The ones uh, the, the 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 major ones I was showing with this breathing uh, breathing breathing part and uh, and and everything, and may also in the research another learning was that um, we were tent. Maybe this is one answer, Svetlana. We would tend to think of uh, a children's hospital, bigger university hospitals uh, of children. But then with the research, it actually turned a little bit. And we said, it's there the clinical staff knows because they have children the whole day. So um, it may also be very beneficial for this bread and butter hospitals that do not see children in their daily life that often. So that was also a little bit an eye opener for us uh, when it comes to the business perspective and to the, uh, to the target user within the hospitals. Okay. Yeah, what I can, can add to this is, is, is also really the thing that of course there are our studies out there that have that great you know apps and um, adventures and um, AR virtual reality um, things in, in the scanners um, but um, as we we also at the beginning were thinking hey an, an app that that is great and we do that breathing app and include it and they can scan it out of the book and actually the chorus is the app but actually that that switched um, we got the feedback actually from from so many stakeholders that we need something simple also for the process in the clinic that should be available and also distributed very easily and um, sometimes that is not so good uh, possible with these with these um, digital things that are sometimes also just available only in the clinics okay so there are several uh, and and i think uh Interesting what you said at the beginning, uh, Alex. That it, you you started somehow on a on a empty piece of paper, a blank sheet of paper. So without too many preconditions. So that's uh, that's uh, an answer, straightforward answer to Svetlana. But I think what you said now, Anna, about the apps uh, and not apps, and then you decided on an audio book and a book. Mm -hmm. uh, so something very non-digital. Actually, Svetlana uh, also had a second question that also I think leads to that because uh, uh, she asked that, of course, there's uh, other similar products maybe or some products that go into the same direction. And she asked specifically about uh, an MRTI experience for GLG healthcare by Doug Dietz. 
and it's built on storytelling as well. But uh, uh, and she asked which part of it did you decide to redesign or rethink with Gerda, or maybe you didn't make any preconditions about the other product, but uh, you took a different approach. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit more about this? We. Um... We know we know about uh, about this uh, GE approach that uh, that they are having, and um, um, what was we wanted to they start um, mainly on the hospital door, or they tell the story um, as far as I'm aware of. <laughs> I hope not saying they tell the story also with the appointment, which is great. But we wanted to go a step further uh, because we found out with studies and everything that how can we reach the families at home? This is maybe Anna, right? How we always pointed it out in our presentations to really make the difference um, in the end in the hospital, we need to reach the families at home. And we also found out there's no standardized process in our healthcare system to really give out material that works. And uh, so we are a little bit more in the beginning uh, at the referring MD where, where really the, um, uh, the incidents or the pain or the um, happens basically, yeah. And, and what I- Yes, um, Jan, okay, sorry, Anna. Um, Carry on and then uh, we'll, we'll take Jan into the talk. <laughs> quickly what what i wanted to add here is that when when i um visited the, the clinics i also um yeah saw that not every child actually get the offer to maybe have um these great experiences or to to get a try out of the lying in the mri um or the ct or um yeah get prepared because the time is always very limited and sometimes it just starts with their coming to the waiting room and then they get Again. So um, there is no process and people also are not, not really trained um, how they um, should interact with the children. So actually we want to have something that empower the children themselves to, to actually help themselves if um, the staff or parents or um, the different um, yeah, people um, who are involved in the process uh, don't have the time for it or are not able to do it. Okay, Jan, please take it away. Oh, first of all, I want to say hi. Nice to see you again, Alex. Nice to um, see you, Jan. Hi. <laughs> I have a question building on what you just said, like that you figured out that uh, there's that there is an opportunity to reach out into the homes. And my question is regarding to uh, scoping or briefing. I mean, how did you figure out that this is this is by what you want to tackle because initially I thought maybe maybe the um, the environment or the the device the machine itself might be what you would want to design and how did you figure out where you want to focus or what your scope is did you have the chance to research this before you write your project plan or the your own briefing mm, I think there are two there are, there are two sources um, that, that, that we looked at. The one was, um, and I can also emphasize that, uh, uh, look at studies. There are so many studies in the healthcare sector out there that you can use as a good basis. We do not need to uh, make uh, quantitative studies by, by ourselves. Uh, I mean, not from the beginning. We should look at the studies that are there already. There's a good basis and uh, check if there's anything in in, in those studies. And there was clearly mentioned and, and, and also from the interviews that we did with the uh, psychologists that are preparing the, the children within the hospitals. We had some interviews um, and uh, they, they were telling us the educational part, really the education where, where you can cognitively reach the families. That is, that is at home and this is the home environment. Once they enter the hospital door, they need distraction. Uh, they, they need more distraction. They do not have this cognitivity of, oh yeah, if I have to lay still, I just think uh, that uh, I'm a crocodile in the sun. If you tell that to a child um, at home, 
and tell it maybe three or four times or they listen to it, then it's completely different than when entering, if we imagine entering the hospital, we have to find the way. Now we are in the radiology department. So you sit down here, new environment, and then you tell the child. So if you lie down still, you just think you're a crocodile in the sun. It does not reach, it's maybe as an example, right? It does not reach the child at this point in time. And that's why in the end, um, we said, okay, we need to reach them at home. Does that answer your question? Yeah, kind of. I mean, I can also imagine that, I mean, it makes total sense that once you're in the tube or in the in the MR, MRI, MRT, it might, that's way late, but I can also imagine that investing in the industrial design is a lot, it takes a lot of effort and money and um, having a simple book has probably um, a higher impact for that. But it's, um, it's a combination. Sorry to interrupt you. I think it's a combination of this holistic approach, not having a football player in the uh, in the beginning, then uh, then uh, then a space shuttle, and in the end, uh, some flowers. You know, it's somehow this holistic approach builds up on each other, and we do have the theme worlds where we can that we can project on the machines or have have it as a sticker or as a whatever uh, provided. So that was there already. So we just needed to connect it. So I think I, I would not say it has no effect, but the biggest effect we have when we um, um, have all the interactions after one after the other within the patient journey. Yeah, I mean, it, something comes to my mind. I don't know if it is it the submarine and the like underwater, like the whole the whole device is or the machine is camouflaged. That's um, it's a different approach, I guess. Yeah. Well, I think I uh, I think uh, you touched upon something, uh, Alexandra, and I think you you. It's not only about holistics, it's about understanding really uh, who you're designing for. And uh, what you, I think this whole project is about uh, understanding the cognitive model of a child and, and getting on, on a child's level. So uh, a child needs time to prepare, that's what you mean. Mm -hmm. It needs to develop a feeling of safety and then be ready uh, and time is of essence. And then also prepare together with the family which can also take away a lot of fear. Um, so I also wondered at some point if the book is also to, to not only to include, but also to soothe parents as well, because they might be preoccupied also. So there is a whole, a whole mental model that's built yeah. around this project that develops around this nucleus of family and time and togetherness, which creates safety, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a really good point. And we also include it in the in the parents' information at the at the end of the book, um, uh, we also included. Um, I, I now have the German uh, the German book, but uh, it's like oh, and you can't read. So it's like the important things. How can you help your child? So it's the process of the examination, but it's also hey, dear parent, you must be also in a stressful situation. So here are some tips. You can take, you do not have to, um, how you can support your child. That comes back to the stress triangle that Anna uh, uh, presented before. The best preparation and the nicest book or audio book does not help if your parents or your family around you is completely out of order and says like, oh, oh my God, the imaging examination. Yeah, so it, that's why, yeah, 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 you said it very nicely. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering whether whether it's a singular project from your point of view uh, in, in terms of a deafness, but also, I mean, death in terms of, of, of uh, uh, um, the complexity, but also you went into a very specific field, maybe that's not the core field in terms of, I don't know, productivity or yield uh, in terms of uh, healthcare uh, uh, system. But what, what my question is aiming at is, is in, in your business field, medical tech, uh, what do you think is the attention, the recognition of user experience, of let's say customer experience as complex as you did in this project? Is this, let's say the, the everyday approach to a project? 
that you took? Is it the status quo? Is it can it be said in that way? No, it's and no, it's certainly it's 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 uh, it's certainly not the 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 daily the daily business. Uh, I think it's a. Uh, the vision is that those kind of projects is like a door opener or to have a foot in the door with these kind of projects because they show the importance of um, of humanizing healthcare, of patient experience, and that patient experience is not only drawing hearts around something, it really has an effect. And uh, having this in combination with our uh, high technology uh, efficient machines, like the big device uh, medicine in combination with such kind of patient experience preparation, whatever project, um, I think that makes uh, that that is a differentiator in the in in the future as well. So to answer your question, no, not every uh, project that we are running within the UX team is uh, is like that, and it cannot be that holistic uh, that you really touch all the all the journeys of the users. Um, this is uh, because um, we have so many different uh, systems and sometimes we need to concentrate only on one and, 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 and one business line or one modality or one approach. Uh, but I still think it is so important in a bigger company to take the time, uh, talk to your colleagues, look over the plate, um, that, uh, that you know what is existing. And I think this is such a big benefit of UX. Uh, we basically, touch and see all the projects that are going on within the company and uh, we should take the time to to talk about it and to say hey where's an handshake are they not having the same idea like those guys and uh, may, may, we can maybe help of uh, them talking to each other um, I, I think this is this is great what ux can do there also from a business perspective it certainly can, but the, uh, getting there is difficult, especially in a large company uh, as yours. So uh, I'm wondering who did you need to convince which stakeholders, decision makers, and how did, the, did you convince them of such a project, which is out of the ordinary, as you said? Well, I think this project, th those kind of projects help. Uh, we did not need to convince uh, um, um, a lot of people, to be to be honest, um, because it was um, it was an approach which was doable, um, and and which also um, was um, was the benefit for all our bigger business lines: computer tomography, MRI, and also. XP, uh, uh, so the X-ray, uh, X-ray products basically, and uh, that's why for this there was not a big, um, um, yeah, uh, a, a bigger talks uh, necessary, so so to say. Um, but when it comes to the UX, I think we need it's it's not going from today to tomorrow um, that that bigger companies see the benefit here. Uh, so I think it's our mission uh, to uh, not get not get tired of show the benefits of of, of uh, experience design and uh, um, yeah and then we will get there and weave it in slowly weave it into the to the to the process as well and it also was great to see that we were so passionate about that about that project and that um, really had an impact on, on also so many people i i had the feeling because we actually got a lot of of offerings from from different people to help us and they actually wanted to get involved into the project and i think that was really because we also constantly um talked about or, or could show the value of this this project and also so so many um people could identify with it because they also had children for example so you would say it's more like a personal perspective and, and winning the hearts of people um, and touching the nerve of saying, this is really, I, I believe this is valuable and not so much about KPIs and numbers and arguments. No, it's, it's certainly it's both. 
<laughs> we cannot live. We cannot. We cannot survive without uh, the KPIs and the hard measurements. And in the end, uh, uh, we need to show that there are some benefits for our for our customers. Definitely, this is always something we need to look at in in parallel with all the passion and 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 everything. Yeah. And do you evaluate this project now in terms of business relevance? Because you want to scale it, you want to further develop it. I think we can say a few words also about the next steps for the project. But uh, I'm wondering about this because it's such a soft, uh, soft project in terms of effect. Mm. Mm, it's not that soft. I think if you look at it from, we do have this technology, big device, uh, medicine and, and, and approach which we are doing. And if you think of, of such projects um, like um, as, an, as an accessory to our scanners, for example, uh, then, and, and, and this accessory is not only helping the patients, it's also helping the clinicians, it's helping the clin clinical staff. And we know that we have limited staff available over the next years. We see that we see that already. So you can certainly put numbers behind if there is a patient coming which is well educated and knows what is going to happen. You have less, less examination time, you have less motion artifacts. Uh, maybe you even have less no-shows. This is how we call the patients when they are just not coming to their appointment uh, which and this these are hard facts numbers behind that costs something and uh, so I would I would more look at it at, 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 at an at an accessory to our uh, hardware or even a service which is which is part of a product of course or even a, even if a service yeah mm -hmm. Can, can you tell us a little bit, I think you did mention this, how much time did the project make, let's say, from the beginning uh, to, to the final prototype? It was uh, two years. Oh. Oh. And this is also during the pandemic as well, so you, you couldn't work uh, as quickly maybe as usual. Yeah, yeah. So that's pretty, a pretty long project, I would say. Um, but still, I mean, in, 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 in your environment, a quick one, of course, you didn't have the same constraints as in a clinical hardware because it was, it was not I actually directly think related. It's big. To, or was it? I think it's quick if you think of really user-centric from the beginning and all business lines, are aligning on the same stuff and have the same milestones and time points to bring something out. I would rather say it's pretty quick, <laughs> but anyhow, yeah. <laughs> Anna, you're nodding from your experience. That's, that, that matches. Yeah, I think what, what was the challenge here is, is, to, is the whole organization. And as Alex said, to bring all the people from, from that big company on board to you know, have discussions, to um, have decisions. And I think, yeah, I think for that one, we, we went quite quick through it <laughs> from beginning to actually having a product that we can, or we have ready. I'm wondering, um, it's, it, it's a quick, to, from my point of view, as an external uh, long process, complex in a big company, <clears throat> can can you tell us a little bit about your your win situations, make or break moments? Were the moments where you thought, "Oh my God, this might <clears throat> this might fall apart," or and as there were probably also project moments that were the ahas where you said, "Like yes, this is it." Can you tell us uh, some insights about this? Anna, do you have something in mind? Otherwise, um, you can you can start. Um, I think for me, um, one uh, one key key or, or turning point was um, when we really had uh, um, the 
people on board in regards of the audio play. At this time, uh, that was something where, where a lot of things were changing because we said, yes, this is what is missing uh, for, for, an, for an experience. And we do have the budget uh, as well to go towards this, uh, this direction and to build, uh, and to build up, up on that. And that changed, that changed a lot. Um, because um, yeah, because it is a, it 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 is uh, it is a project where uh, we uh, we do not have from the beginning um, this um, um, this business because it is something that we give to the to the clinics basically, and. Um, and uh, yeah, so this was for me uh, one of the one of the happiest 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 moments, uh, and also the the, the co creation. I think that was uh, such a great experience. Um, um, also, where I thought, okay, it will never going to happen uh, because it was COVID. Um, uh, we wanted to make the pictures. Uh, we needed to have everything from the parents. And we were like, okay, what's happening if, if the children just do not bother and they want to play with the uh, soap bubbles uh, instead of telling us their fears? <laughs> so that was, uh, yeah, um, quite um, an, an interesting and, and exciting time. Yeah, I think for me it was was the the time when we actually had the first printout and these boxes that we actually could deliver to our collaboration partner because that was kind of okay the start now they are really using it and now we really get valuable feedback from the whole workflow because I mean as, as we said there was COVID and there were um, regulations and you know all the yeah clinics they not often had time for us and there were delays and so we are so happy to get some some clinics on board to actually could could do that. And then we were okay. Now it's really there. It can be tested, and now it's going on. And the boxes I, were not delivered at the right time, right? We had yeah. sometimes because we had this, we had the things to take in our hands. It was really books, mm -hmm. and the boxes sometimes arrived at the wrong places. So we were, yeah, that was. Uh, <laughs> So sometimes it's the small things, even in a high tech environment that can go wrong. So what's next for the product? Uh, I mean, uh, at the moment it's in Germany or um, is it available in other parts of the world? And what's next? Because you, I mean, your MRI scans are also designed to be used. I mean, to be very accessible, very easy to install and, and very useful also um, to medics throughout the world, also in developing countries. So. Can you tell us a little bit more about it? Mm -hmm. so, what can so, we expect? So the box is already available in uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland, UK, and 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 Ireland. Um, the the box with the material, uh, the um, the digital. Um, in digital uh, way, uh, it's it's available for the entire <laughs> regions, uh, so to say. And we are currently uh, definitely working on uh, translations into other languages. Um, and then also, it's not only to translate the books and uh, uh, how do we how do we review the rhymes? I mean, we do not speak Chinese or Arabic, and uh, so there are some challenges uh, coming up as in this terms as well. And it's not only books; it's also the audio play, which then uh, needs to be uh, translated. But certainly, yes. So this this will be the first steps to. To, to provide it in, in, in different languages because this is something we hear from the market and uh, especially France is something they need to have something in, 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 in French in their, in their language. And, uh, but also German hospitals, they were asking us for Arabic because or for U U Ukraine language because they see a lot of, uh, a lot of kids here um, that also needs to undergo an examination. So this this will be the first uh, the first steps. And does that mean uh, a completely new, maybe not completely new process, but uh, some add-on processes in terms of cultural understanding and and adaptation? Certainly, yeah. 
certainly maybe the may, maybe it does not work everywhere and what we see already is that uh, um, hospitals um, also would like to uh, put a little bit of their individual flavor on it it's not that they are um, it, it 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 helps certainly uh, to have something but then uh, we also hear oh we would like to co-create for our hospital something <laughs> so yeah so, so that maybe that opens new possibilities as well that you didn't plan for, which could even be business possibilities in terms of uh, doing a design co-creation service for hospitals around the world. So I think that that could lead to maybe something like that context and, and wider impact. If you think beyond this product as it is now, were you hoping or were you thinking that it could have, you can, it can trigger change on a larger scale? What do you think? Mm, me personally, I uh, I thought that from the beginning that can that 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 we that we have something small in our hand that can grow. Um, that 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 was I'm I was convinced uh, convinced or we were in the team convinced mm -hmm. uh, convinced by by that certainly yeah. Yeah, and it's great if you have this mindset that you stay flexible, stay open, and uh, and 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 listen uh, to what is carefully what is coming in, and uh, and meet within the team uh, to discuss it as well. Well, I'm I'm also very glad to hear, as you mentioned at the beginning, that the, the award actually helped. Uh, uh, to push this product, and I understand it helped you even internally in the company, not as much as externally. How come? Well, externally as well, uh, because the people are looking at it. Uh, that that helps certainly, uh, but also internally, our uh, um, marketing and communications product managers they were asking for uh, for the logo um, because they see the benefit and they said this is this is great uh, what we have so it's like this this team approach again and uh, and um, how can we say that uh, yeah it's like it's like proven from external experts it's not from internal ux team which may be immunized with the project anyhow <laughs> it's coming from external and i think this um this gives another um value to it yeah well, this is certainly what we intend with the awards and uh, obviously uh, it's great also I hope for the jury members who might be hearing this right now that uh, it's actually why we do this. Uh, it's um, to give visibility to the value of user experience, but also to help teams scale, develop uh, based on expert knowledge and based on facts that uh, help to sustain the work and validate the work. So Alexandra, dear Anna, dear Alexandra, thank you so much for your presentation, the insights and the very nice talk and very lively talk. I think that the emotions that you had in this project, they really, uh, uh, the spark uh, came over even through Zoom. So good luck for uh, the next steps. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having us. It was, it was really fun. It was great. Thank you. Wonderful, great. So thanks also to everyone for joining us. If you missed anything, the recording of the talk uh, will be on LinkedIn right away and on YouTube and our website in one of the days. We'll cut it a little bit. And of course, if you want to uh, uh, stay along with us uh, with our deep dives and talent tracks, then just let's continue in the next few weeks and months. And actually on October 19th, uh, you will hear from the new Talent Gold Award winner uh, of 2022. Milan Bergheim and his project Peat Lab, which is about a fascinating concept, how you can monitor and re-wet peatlands and turn them into huge, huge carbon sinks. So it's a very interesting concept. So tune in, in two weeks. There is more on our website. Check out also the call for entries if you're working on great UX. We would be glad to welcome you in our next events and of course as participants in the awards as well. Until then, please stay well wherever you are. Have a lovely day, morning, or evening. And wherever you are, see you soon again, hopefully. Bye-bye.